Welcome back to Lost Test Channel. My name is Anton Vjeltsen. I'm a criminal defense attorney in the Southern District of California here in San Diego. In this video, we're going to discuss a federal case that perfectly illustrates the importance of figuring out and resolving your federal cases before any state cases. What do I mean by that? Well, some of my clients sometimes have a pending state charges. And I always tell them that we need to calm down and figure out the federal case first. Otherwise, you can really mess it up. So let's go ahead and take a look at this case and you'll understand even better what I'm talking about. In this video, we're discussing United States versus Diaz, a 10th Circuit case that was published just a few days ago. And as always, we're first going to discuss the facts and then we're going to discuss sentencing guidelines and how much time this individual was facing and what the law in the 10th Circuit tells us about the relationship between federal and state court. Here's what happened. On November 4th, 2018, Mr. Diaz was arrested for first degree trespass in state court. On December 4th, 2018, he was indicted on illegal reentry charges under 8 USC 1326. I have a number of videos dealing with this statute, 8 USC 1326, and I encourage you to click on the video above and watch those videos. It deals with illegal reentry into the United States. Now, of course, we're now dealing with two separate jurisdictions. We have a state charge, trespass, and we have a federal charge. Obviously, the state one came first, and so Mr. Diaz is now in state custody. The federal government gets a warrant from the court to bring Mr. Diaz into federal jurisdiction. But instead of arresting him or bringing him from one jail facility to the federal one, instead they sit on the warrant and they don't bring him. And they just watch how the state charges get resolved. On October 28, 2019, Mr. Diaz pleads guilty to the state charges. And on the same day, he receives a two year or 24 months sentence. Then he's brought to federal court for the first time. On December 2nd, 2019, he appears in federal court on the indictment. He gets arraigned on the charges. Then on January 23rd, 2020, he pleads guilty to this federal offense, illegal reentry. The sentencing court now has to figure out how much time Mr. Diaz is facing on these federal charges on 8 U.S.C. 1326. Well, this charge, 8 U.S.C. 1326, can be found in the sentencing guidelines in Chapter 2L1.2. I will link the sentencing guidelines below under this video, and I, of course, encourage you to click on that link and look at the sentencing guidelines and focus on this chapter, 2L1.2. It tells us how to calculate the guidelines. Something to remember. The sentencing guidelines are just that. They're guidelines. They're advisory. They're not mandatory. They tell the federal court relative sentence to impose on any given crime. But at the end of the day, the federal district judge makes the ultimate decision. He can sentence you to more time or less time than what the sentencing guidelines say. Now, in this situation, we're now dealing with criminal history. In order to figure out how much time an individual is facing on the table, which is also in the sentencing guidelines, we have to look at the offense levels, which are rows, the worse the crime, the higher the offense level, and then we have to figure out an individual's criminal history category. Categories go through one to six. And obviously, the worse the criminal history individual has, the more time he's facing. In fact, the intersection between offense levels and criminal history categories give you months 
in custody. Again, the judge doesn't have to follow it, but a lot of judges do. So first we have to figure out how much time he's facing. Well, originally, Mr. Diaz had 10 through 12 criminal history points and he was in criminal history category 5 with base offense level 12, or I'm sorry, adjusted level. When I say adjusted level, this 12 included three levels off for acceptance of responsibility and additional reductions for fast track or resolving the case quickly. So his adjusted level was 12 and he was looking at 27 to 33 months in custody. But wait a second. When he pled guilty to the federal charges, he now had this additional state conviction. How do we calculate criminal history points? Well, any time, any prior conviction that you have is one point. If you've been convicted and sentenced to more than 60 days, that's two points. If you've been convicted and sentenced to a year and one month or more, that's three points. And if you're currently on probation, parole, or supervised release, that's an additional two points. So if you think about it, those can add up pretty quickly. In this situation, Mr. Diaz received a two-year, 24-month sentence, which is, I'll let you do the math, well, it's a three-point offense, right? It's more than one year and one month. One year and one month is 13 months. He received 24 months. It's a three-point offense. Because it's a three-point offense, he now jumps criminal history categories. So by the time we're at sentencing, instead of being in category five, he's now in category six. But wait a second. If you look at 2L1.2, it tells us that the base offense level is eight at 2L1.2. And then there's some enhancements. If you had prior illegal entries, like misdemeanors or felonies, there's some enhancements there. And we have to look at the criminal history before and after deportation. And depending on how much time you've served on that state or federal conviction, that will also enhance the level. So in this situation, his adjusted level jumps from 12 to 20. So not only does he jump criminal history categories because he has this extra three point offense, but he also jumps levels. And now he's at 70 to 87 months. That's more than double the time that he's facing. What does the district court do in this situation? Well, they have to properly calculate the guidelines. And the guidelines are now 70 to 87 months. The court then still varies a little bit down and imposes a 63 months sentence. How does the court arrive to the 63 months mark? Well, here's what the court says. First, we, they say that they looked at the plea agreement and the plea agreement stipulated that his criminal history category will be five. And so that's one reason to vary down. And the second reason is if we take the high end, 87 months under criminal history category six, subtract the 24 month sentence that he already received in state custody, well, 87 minus 24 is 63 months. Does that make a lot of sense? Maybe, maybe not. I'm not a district judge. It made sense to this district judge. And after all, he did vary from 87 months, from 70 to 87 months. In fact, it's lower than even the low end of the guidelines. Mr. Diaz appeals. Hey, sorry for this quick interruption, but can you do me a huge favor? Can you click that subscribe button below and maybe even that bell so next time I post, you're the first one to get that notification? And finally, if you're interested, get one of these Do Not Arrest Me t-shirts that are available on my website and they're a great gift. Thanks for watching. He says that he was treated much worse than someone who would not experience the unjustified government delay. He says it's the government's fault for not bringing him on federal charges. Why were they waiting a year 
to try to figure out how the state resolves the case. Instead, if they would have brought him into federal custody, he might have pled guilty to the charge and resolved it earlier without this extra three-point conviction and would have been looking at much less time. He also says that when the district court sentences an individual, they have to avoid unwarranted disparities, meaning that individuals that face the same crime and have similar characteristics, similar criminal history, should receive a similar sentence. And he says, because he had this unjust delay in being brought to federal court, he's not looking at much more time. Well, the 10th Circuit disagrees with Mr. Diaz. And it says that at the time of sentencing, the district court properly considered his record as it was and not as it might have been. So when we're dealing with sentencings, the district court has to properly calculate the guidelines. Did they do it correctly here? Yes. In order to overturn the district court, the appellate court had to find that this sentence was unreasonable. And there's nothing unreasonable about it. The district court did exactly what they were supposed to do. The judge calculated the guidelines and then he even varied down a little bit lower. What does this case teach us? Well, here's what I always tell my clients. It is important to try to figure out your state and your federal charges kind of at the same time. And usually, usually, the federal charges should be resolved first. Why? Because federal court looks at your criminal history. And in fact, the worse it is, you will jump through criminal history categories. It will get higher and higher. And so often enough, I have a client who, for example, has a pending charge for DUI. And he tells me, I spoke to my state attorney and he tells me that even though I'm in custody here on federal charges, he can resolve it even without me. 977, meaning that he can plead me guilty and sentence me without even being present there. He can do it without my presence because I'm in federal custody. And I always tell those clients, wait a second, your state attorney doesn't know what he's talking about. Because if I let you plead guilty to that state charge, you might jump criminal history categories. And all of a sudden, you're facing more time, or at least the advisory guideline range is now higher. Why would you do that to yourself? Instead, what you need to do is hire an attorney that works both state and federal court and knows the relationship between those two jurisdictions. And sometimes, if the charges are serious enough, you can even work with both prosecutors in the federal and the state side and try to figure out a global resolution. If you enjoyed this video, if you now understand a little bit more about the sentencing guidelines, that's what I wanted to hear from you. Click like, subscribe, hit that bell notification button. Next time I post, you'll be first to know.